<laughs> what? <laughs> what card do I use to unlock my virginity? Says Luke. <laughs> God damn it! She's very right. They don't make that card. Um, yeah, they don't, they I'm trying to. I'm trying to think of a witty comeback, but I can't think of a card right now. Yeah. It's because I'm right. They don't make there, a card. There's a that reverse. Does that. Reverse heart or something. Or reverse fate. I would have used. I don't know. Zach, go with the intro. Uh, you betcha. Hello, everyone, and welcome to podcast number 98. With me, I have Chaos Mana. Hey! Mr. Fusion. Hey! <laughs> Night Saw, special guest. Toast. Yes! Okay. Nobod. B! <laughs> and other special guest, Descent. I, I don't have a joke. Damn it! <laughs> You're not Chris coming back. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you're never coming back. You lose it. The I joke was, know. you're not a special guest. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! There you go. See, I told you. I he makes the perk. jokes for you. We got you, bro. Yeah. You come on this podcast, we hook you up. You don't need to make jokes. We make them for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Excellent. I honestly forgot Chris was here for a second. <laughs> we are a self-sustaining <laughs> podcast with humor. We uh, cultivate our own humor and jokes. Yes. Yeah. So... I want to talk about card games on motorcycles. Something, yeah, card games <laughs> on motorcycles. That's bullshit. You ruined my childhood. <laughs> D- fucking yeah. fuck you. But I don't know. Maybe it's just nostalgia. Like, have you tried watching Yu-Gi-Oh recently? I like, did. Watch I did Yu-Gi-Oh! watch through it recently, and the uh, actual sh- the original five seasons, with a couple exceptions, was a pretty nice story altogether. It had. Uh, of course, a lot of silly moments, but overall, the actual arc was pretty nice. Then it got a little silly. I have Yu-Gi-Oh! Distinct... Zexel is awful. Yeah, <laughs> Zexel is awful. Amen. I, was actually, I actually used to be part of an anime site where that was a joke, where we'd compare stuff to Zexel's on how bad it is. Yeah. I, like... I have distinct memories of my dad laughing at all the things I was watching when I was little, like Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! and, and even Dragon Ball Z to some extent. And then I rewatched some of them, and I'm like, they're, like, I started laughing too. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's why he laughed, because this is fucking ridiculous. I don't know. Like, at the same time, I have great memories, though. Like, it's like, oh yeah. So it's like nostalgia fighting my common sense. It's, it's, a, it's a very tough battle. Just Speaking of nostalgia... Did you hear what Disney's going to be bringing back? No. Oh, DuckTales. Star Wars? Motherfucking DuckTales. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. They're going to reboot it. It's not just going to be a continuation. They're going to reboot it. So. Interesting. Yeah, I saw but all the screenshots on uh, Twitter. They're all going to be like... They're going to all have be, be uh, elite gamers and just... <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Sure. <laughs> they're going to ruin it. <laughs> And yeah, instead of a, a vault full of uh, gold <laughs> coins, they're going to be bitcoins. Yes. Oh, no, no, they're going to be dogecoins. <laughs> he's not going to have uh, uh, treasure maps in the printouts of Google Earth. <laughs> and he's just going to find like, ships. His nephews are going to exactly. use drones to investigate things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then he's going to drop bombs to blow up, blow up a hole to the treasure. Yeah. Uh, there might be some civilian casualties, but don't worry about it, kids. They were Flint Heart Blomgoat is actually going to be an ISIS <laughs> member. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's okay, they're going to make a movie about that later. Yeah. And uh, Launchpad McQuack is actually a uh, a uh, former uh, former Air Force pilot that suffers from PSTD. PSTD? 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 What? I don't know. <laughs> OPP, but he suffers from post-traumatic stress. You know me. And uh, let's see, who, what else? Um, Gizmo Duck is going to be a Bluetooth, uh, total electric, uh, uh, revised Schizo. Prius. Yeah, hybrid. Oh, okay. And let's see, what else? Hmm. What are we missing? We have to modernize DuckTales. Come on, there's something else. Um, what about um, like... the gold vault will be empty? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's going to be full of It's going to be just about Bitcoin. I mean, Dude, bitcoins aren't, they're all digital, though. That's the thing. Exactly. That's, still, that's what I'm saying. It's be a single hard drive so sitting it's in the be a server of a giant room? cabinet. Yeah, it's going to be a hard drive. Uh, <laughs> there be... will be a female on this show, and it will be a catfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they weren't real the whole time. We find out in the final season, sorry for spoiling, and it's not real. And it's yeah. voiced by Kim Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 
She's so gonna be like, uh, like, where are we gonna be going, Uncle Scrooge? <laughs> Once a season, Kanye West will interrupt home? everyone to tell them that Beyonce yes. should have been on the show. That, yeah. That's actually part of the joke because once they figure out he's a catfish, they meet him in person, and it's actually Kanye West, who is still not a gay fish. He's a gay fish. He's not a gay. Fish. He is a gay fish. <laughs> he is a. He's a lyrical genius and the voice of a generation. He's not a catfish. He is a pussfish. <laughs> <laughs> but they're also actually. I just saw this too. Netflix will be rebooting Inspector Gadget. Really, I did not. Netflix. See that. Like the cartoon, or that's happened a few times. Yes, as a cartoon. Rarely. Yeah, yeah, yeah I love that cartoon. I used to watch it when I visited my cousins up in Canada. How how a lot how are how much are they keeping to what's already been said um, or what's already been done? They just it's the it's just another one where they're saying they're just going to reboot. Uh, they're going to reboot the cartoon, so they're going to make it modern Real so new gadget. audience can come in. I'm sure. Yeah. So gadget is going to be in a crack or something. I don't Will know. he have a go go gadget Batman? <laughs> Just like, if he's in a bind, he just whips out Batman. Well, he'll be more effective because, like, due to microprocessing, he'll have a better processor, better yeah. RAM. He'll be, he'll be liquid-cooled. <laughs> he'll have SSDs instead of the large-plated HDD drives, you know. His uh, his main villain will actually be Lizard Squad. There you go. <laughs> At some point, he will get swatted. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and Don't watch out bad. for the catfish. Yeah. Um, everything new has to have no, a catfish. My, what did you do with catfish? It's have modern. Catfish lately? Lately? Is that what I think he got catfish no, lately. No, it's modern. I tried scorn. to make it modern. Okay. You've been catfish. How old was, was the guy? Uh, he was actually 12. I was actually still going to go with it. But um, but he was sleeping with your mom? I got swatted. I got swatted. <laughs> I got so, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Plot twist. Oh, I got geez. swatted. My, my question is, when are, when are they bringing back the actual best show of my childhood? Animaniacs. Oh, oh, I thought you were going to say Rocket Gosh, Power. Was, no, Animaniacs was so much. It was just the shit. It all was around. So good. It was hey, so good. Freakazoid, Hello, too. Come on now. Nurse. Yeah, Freakazoid's amazing, too. Don't get me wrong. Freakazoid was good. All, all those, Animaniacs all those WB was kind of a boggling one because I, they sold a lot of merchandise with Animaniacs. I just don't think the numbers did very well, but I think it was because it, they put it in the regular afternoon lineup and it just didn't mesh well with all the other well, shows this sh- because it... Kind of like how we go, <laughs> kind of like how we go, My Little Pony, and then Littlest Pet Shop, and then we just throw some Scooby Doo in there to just throw off yeah. everyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was a hub joke, ladies and gentlemen. Which yeah. recently shut down. It did? Really? Yeah, it's it's gone. Wow, huh. they do wrong. Did was, they say um, no, My Little Pony season five? I listen to this guy Pan Pizza. He does a podcast, and apparently they shut down uh, a few months ago. Wow, this is ridiculous. I've I've heard nothing about this, which is weird because I think they the might have rebranded, but the actual like channel is just gone. So, w- if you had been watching it, would there have been like a last few shows before it disappeared? Uh, I think they did do like a going off the air special, but that I think would it was, be like, so weird to see hours. just a channel be like, nope. Well, aren't they? I think they're just they're retitling it, aren't they? Discovery Family or something stupid. So, like yeah, that? something like that. But they're scrapping a lot of the shows that were on there. Yeah. Do any of you watch Boomerang? I, I used to watch watched Boomerang. it a lot. That was because of the I didn't really didn't like a lot of the new shows they were introducing to Cartoon Network, Disney, and Nickelodeon. I started watching Boomerang a lot because that was all my favorite shows, and a lot of them I hadn't seen yet. I like to watch uh, Yogi Bear. Yeah, Yogi, Yogi Bear. Pretty G. <laughs> He's pretty G back in the day. And Some might even say OG. Yo- Yogi Bear. Really, I like Boomerang because they, really they, they didn't, at least when I was watching Boomerang, <laughs> they didn't have like any commercials except a commercial for a show or maybe a music video. Or a, yeah. or a fake commercial. Yeah, exactly. The cartoons that was so cool. It, it was yeah. mind-blowing to me to have an actual not million minute break in between my shows. It was 2 a.m. though, yeah. like, when they were showing all this shit, so it's <laughs> like, I guess they could get away with not having commercials. Guys. Uh, it was like it was like MTV for kids, honestly. Not, not, not that I'm thinking about it right now. They actually like, did, um, they did all their a thing with an old TV show, The Roadrunner. They actually tried to redo it along with the Looney Tunes show that they redid, like yeah. the one where they were all in the house. Yeah, that was yeah. horrible. And uh, they did, we did it with like CGI. It 
seemed nice, but it just lacked like the touch the original. It didn't one have the had. charm. Yeah. yeah. Tiny Toons was their only successful like attempt to re remake to modernize the show. Movie. Yeah. yeah. And I liked Tiny Toons. It was good. It was just, uh, I don't know. Looney Tunes is just, uh, okay. Even for me at my age, Looney Tunes was still old cartoons. But you didn't think about it. But if you go back and watch now, there's so much lying undertones of racism <laughs> and sexism. Um, yeah, that actually yeah. brings me back to a Homophobia. point I wanted to make earlier. Um, What's we, up? When we were talking about DuckTales. Uh-huh. Has anyone seen the uh, short that was made of Daffy Duck where he beats up Hitler? What? It exists. <laughs> no. it, yeah. They put it out during World War II. But uh, I think in like the 60s they stopped showing it because it was really offensive towards Germans. <laughs> nah, fuck them. They need to remember forever and always. <laughs> really, for, well, really nah. offensive towards Germans. It was like a specific German. Yeah, it was, I don't, it, I don't, it was offensive against Nazis. Like, well, yeah, but... Uh, I mean, I guess it was offensive to some degree. Like, all of them are offensive. Like, the depiction of the prop, like the propaganda with Bugs Bunny and, like, the Axis powers are all depicted, like, terribly gross, and it's kind of yeah. fucked up, like, r- really racist. So, I mean, that that I understand. But, uh, yeah, no, it's... fuck Nazis. I just... I find that funny, because he, like, literally gets in, like, this little, like, one-prop plane and flies over the ocean and just invades uh, the base, goes in and starts slapping Hitler around. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. He hits him with the, with the ball-peen hammer. So, yeah. yes. Daffy the Commando was the uh, cartoon, yes. Cool, man. Yeah, I like Tommy and Cat. When like, you watch the... When you go back and watch the Looney Tunes, you're just like, wow, really? Yeah. How did I not see that? Of course, I was oh, a yeah, little there, kid when I was like, oh, There boy, was an episode I, that was still in syndication when I was little... Um, where Bugs is playing the piano up on stage, and all the way in the back, there's a family of three, uh-huh. and they're meant to re- represent black people. Yeah. And the mother, Damn. to make the baby shut up, shoves an entire watermelon in its mouth. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, there was a lot of black... That, that's the thing. In the Looney Tunes, there was a lot of blackface. Yeah. A lot. Lord. And Jeez, okay. Yeah. And uh, but probably, like, I was going to say, probably, like, when I started hitting my teens towards the 90s is when they started removing a lot of those cartoons. Because yeah. I remember as a kid watching and seeing those shows, and I didn't really understand. And then as I got to my teen years, I look, you know, you would see the couple of them. You're like, what the fuck? The ones that were still that slipping they through. Those, yeah, the ones that they were slipping through. And then they removed a lot of those. The ones they kept around were the... Uh, like the uh, the slowpoke Rodriguez, you know the the the, the lazy Mexican jokes, yeah. Yeah. The, the mice. Um, he, so wasn't, th- wasn't he brought back for the new Looney Tunes show as as um, Speedy Speedy Gonzalez's cousin? Wasn't he in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's speed, he's always been Speedy Gonzalez's cousin, slowpoke Rodriguez. Yes, slowpoke but uh, I mean, like, just they would have those those they would have them in the cartoon. It, it, it just as as we got towards the nineties. They started removing those more and more. Those really obvious ones, and a lot of them. I will tell you this: a lot of them were blackface, and it was just wow, blatantly it's, obvious. Yeah, like as a kid, you don't notice because you're just laughing at the the violence and like the silly antics, and then. Well, well, you know when they when they draw them very, you know, you know, as caricatures in blackface, and there there is one where you know it's it, it, there's a like a, a musical number where. Bugs is singing and they're all dancing around with blackface, and then one guy just starts eating a big piece of watermelon. You just, you just, you're listening to the mu- the the music, and you're like, just okay, huh, whatever. But as you get older, you're like, what the, the fuck am I yeah, looking at? What the yeah. fuck is? Jeez, this? it's like who allowed this shit, you know? But you know, and I know we're gonna talk about it, talk about it at TFT talks later. But it's kind of like related to, um, I don't know if you guys have watched Agent Carter at all. Um, but that's a period piece, you know, it's, it's Marvel, but based on, you know, the forties during Cap, you know, right after Captain yeah. America came about and all that stuff. But, you know, that era was really fucked up because women were like, you know, they were treated like shit. And that show really does cover that, you know, it's like just how much we've evolved as a society, even though there's so much shit out there. When you look at the history of our country, it's like, okay, we have progressed a lot because this is the kind of stuff that if, if this stuff was released out, you know, on television now. or on Netflix now. Oh my God! You know, think about that. Jeez, it, it, there would be massive media panic yeah. for no reason, but there would be. I think I tweeted that about something. It was some content. Now I can't remember where. Oh, it was um, 
Billy Idol was an 80s rocker. He had a song called Rock the Cradle of Love, right? And it's yeah. about just a guy that, that falls in love with a younger a, a younger girl, right? And I said, you know, had that came out today, that would create such a shitstorm. Because yeah. it's about just, you know, it, it's about, you know, lusting after an underage girl. And, uh, like, a teenage girl. And it's just like, you think about it now, oh, boy. Just the thought of what it would do now. It would probably shut down Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> It would break the internet. It Tumblr would, the would be internet. on fire, man. I mean, it normally Shit. is on fire anyway. It's on but fire, that's... yo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, yeah. The uh, firewall. But, I mean, you know, that was my... When I was real little and then as I got older, it was, you know, the Tiny Toons. And then when I hit my teen years, it was Animaniacs. Good shows. Freakazoid was entertaining. Yeah. And then when I got into my late teens, you know, I needed more adult-oriented stuff. So you had, like, The Tick and shit like that. The Tick is so fucking good. Wasn't there an episode of Tiny Toons about drinking? I think so. There's always, like, subtle hints to, like, drinking and, like... No, like, it full-on was just about drinking. It wasn't subtle. Wait, do they yeah, like find like? Oh, what's this? Is this a? Yeah, they, t- they like they literally take a beer out of the fridge, drink it, and it's... start driving around. <laughs> it's Grandpa's <laughs> happy juice. Like, it... <laughs> like, I don't know how they would put that. Together. Oh my god, it's on YouTube. What? It it's was on... a banned episode. Oh, yeah. My god. Okay then, <laughs> link dump material. Oh yeah, man. The, um, and what Mr. Um, what Mr. Warburg said in the uh, stream chat. The original uh, Tom and Jerry finale was them both committing suicide by train. I thought that was a, like a rumor or fake. I thought Tejan Lee, Tejan Lee should step in because he said something about that on TFT Talks ca- uh, cartoons. It was it was like a it was like a troll even, thing. Even so, they did like um, in like Looney Tunes, they did commit like suicide. Like they would put a gun to their head, it would cut away, but you would hear the bang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some dark shit, man. But at the same time, it's like. That's what humor is. It's it's making light of everything that's dark in this world so that it's pretty, not as dark. Pretty much the internet is One now giant. what Looney Tunes used to be, except that it's more direct. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. I heard I heard it said once that uh, comedy was the only alternative response to the dark things in life beyond just Heck. having a nervous breakdown. Yeah. Well, and it's true, but you also know that the darkest people you'll ever meet are comedians. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. are, like, they suffer from depression and anxiety. Like, they're they're worse Manic off depressives. than most people. Yeah. yeah. yeah mo- but most what happens people. is is that they're able to project that into a different form, and that's why they, they thrive in comedy. Well, even if you just but, you yeah. pay attention to half the jokes, most of the time there's a lot of self-deprecation, and, yeah. and it's, it's pretty... pretty standard a lot like i i've heard a lot of comedians talk about that and it's something that they all they all just in their community they just know that like they're all they're all aware yeah. that they're all fucked up and miserable yeah, yeah wasn't it bernie that said um the hardest rap party he ever went to was one with comedians because they just drank and drank and drank, mm-hmm. and drank. oh yeah yep yep i mean they're i mean they're very I unhappy people man they're very, they are yeah well i don't know i it's it's hard to be happy, um, especially since, you know, I keep bringing this up, but now that we live in an age where a lot of our needs are provided for, we don't have to worry about our needs as much. We start worrying about our existential state of mind and being. So it's like, you know, it's, well, yeah, you're right, it's because, all we think, and I think about now is like, and are I'll, we happy? I'll disclose this, like, you know, my wife battles anxiety, and with my medical conditions I've gone through the past year, I've had to, I developed a case of anxiety, and of course, the first thing that they do is they they need to medicate you in all forms, but it's a very commonplace thing that a lot of people are on medication to deal with depression and anxiety, not just, I mean, and a lot of people that you know that don't talk about it are on on medication, and it's, it's growing because... A lot of it has to do with, and it, you you can call it an ADD society is what we are now, but it's because we have access to everything instantly, and we don't have to go very far. And the more connected we get that way, the more disconnected we are as people. That's well, what I you, think. You could argue back and forth until the end of time as to yeah. what exactly is causing that, but I think there's definitely an You could definitely make the argument that it's a much more prevalent thing now, yeah. at least. Yeah. And it's funny because the more open we are with like social media, 
we're actually you you wonder it's like okay are we actually making it worse because now people are constantly posting on Facebook looking for attention on Twitter looking for attention looking for that that gratification yeah. if they get retweeted or favorited was, or liked you know I was actually just yeah. thinking the other day this is I mean we're right around the cusp of the being the last generation that's going to actually remember what it was like to not be completely connected electronically to everything yeah, like, the last semi. You know, you, I I remember what it was like to not ever pick up the phone and ask somebody where are you, because yeah. if you're calling them, you used to know. Yep, that was the only way they would answer. Yeah. Is they're right and, there? And now, and now, if if you get a phone call, you worry because it's a serious thing, like something bad's happening because someone's calling you rather than texting you or emailing Skyping you or Facebooking you or, whatever, you or something. Yeah. If it's a Twittering phone you. call, you're like, oh it my god, what is this? This has to be phone. something bad. This yeah, it, it's either it's either a really annoying troll die. call now, it's, or it's, it's just a negative experience. Important. It's just, it's the in the extremes of both sides of the spectrum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. Man, we're getting pretty depressive here. Well, I mean, Back to like tiny. Hey man, I got really old. You something that I always before. say is, um, <laughs> right now there are 15 year olds on this planet that were born in the new millennium. Oh, yeah, God, and that's something me. that makes me feel old. It's like there are teenagers, and I am 21 now, and I remember when you know the was 90s the was the best millennium. thing ever. And now if I if I go to a nine year old now and say, "Tell me what a VCR is," they actually don't know. Yeah, yeah. What's what's that, the the Scrubs. YouTube channel where they ask kids to like. Or kids react oh, to. It's, um, yeah, kids yeah. React to. It's by yeah, the yeah. There we go. And you, you, they've done ones where they hand them like uh, an old, like original Game Boy or yeah. a, a Walkman, all I that still stuff. Have my Game Boy. The only reason my my sister knows what a floppy disk is or what a Game Boy is is because like she would get all my brothers, me and my brothers, hand me downs, and my dad likes. He's like a nerd when it comes to like old tech, so he has a lot of it lying around. So. That's the only reason she knows about any of the older technology is because of the fact that she has people like, you know, me and my brother and my dad. Bernie said his uh, his youngest, JD, he, when they were playing the Stanley Parable, that he called a floppy disk a big save button. Yeah, the save button, yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. Like, it's so crazy to think about how... I used that in, like, first grade-ish to, like, get yep. a couple pictures yep. for a yearbook. Or something like that. Like it was so, that. That's the only time I remember using them in an official capacity. Oh, now, are y'all talking about the three by five or the big film ones? No, big yeah. Five, see, that's what my inch. dad. That's what. Okay, and that's that's a funny thing. Fusion is my dad's like the the three by five aren't floppy disks. They're something. He said something they're not even disk. floppy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. No, That's exactly what he said. And he's like, <laughs> they're not floppy. The, the five inch ones, the film ones, those are the floppy yes. disk. All right, Dad. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, those were floppy disk. And then when they came out with the three by five, they just started calling them floppy. And yeah. They just, that just the name just stuck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still got a Yeah, but it's, it wasn't dubbed that because of the film for data. It was dubbed that yeah. because the plastic encasing, you could wave it and it would flop back and forth. Yeah. And those things were some of a bitch, man. You want to play a game? You have to load like, that's ten as, of those. That's as big as, like, a picture nowadays taken by our phones or HD cameras yep. would be the equivalent. Now we have micro SDs that have 64 and, and megabytes. And I think, uh, let's mm-hmm. see, a floppy contained, God, how many, not even a megabyte, right? No, it's like I, a few it was... hundred kilobytes. Let's see, I'm trying to think here how much. I remember in um, middle school, my computer's teacher, this was sixth grade, so this was like, I don't know how long ago, but he had a terabyte um, hard drive, and this thing was like two feet by like six inches, and it was a (laughs) big rectangle, and it had a USB cord to plug into the computer. And it's like this is awesome. And now I go to Walmart, and you can get a two terabyte, you can get a two terabyte, terabyte. external hard drive for like 80 bucks and he paid like yeah. 200 for that thing at the time yeah floppy disk is 1.2 megabytes so quick somebody do quick do the math how much is that to a, a, a gig a thousand yeah is it a thousand? uh well it's yeah. It, yeah it's a thousand it, and it, ten <laughs> yes a thousand floppy disk to get one gigabyte christ <gasps> So if you have an eight gig flash drive, you would need eight thousand of those floppy disks. Not not even a little drive like this. <laughs> to have the storage capacity like of gigabyte that drive micro cards. I remember it's being amazing to think how storage has changed. <laughs> yeah, like. Do you want to know my very first computer 
that I pur- I've purchased was through Gateway. Like I had a Commodore and I had a Tandy. Those were like store little store bots. My first like real like PC PC that ran Windows 3.1 then 95 had I'm not kidding when I say this. The RAM was 64 megabytes. Mhm. The yeah, hard drive, the hard drive was I think 100 megabytes. <laughs> I have um the box to the first computer I have in my garage. It was it was an it was a Mac, so I I think it had like sixteen megabytes of RAM. And I just right. look That's at that now good. and I laugh, thinking like sixteen we megabytes. And, and I think I think the processor was a hundred and thirty three megahertz. <laughs> Christ, hundred and thirty three megahertz. We have phones that are. Like eight, eighty times you, or a hundred times faster. Times those now, those fifteen year olds who weren't born before this millennium are walking around with fucking supercomputers in their back pocket well, and complaining. Well, even yep. even better that we're yeah. walking around and like slapping computers for being slow when the NASA like <laughs> space systems were launched with computers that were barely even half of what what we have today that held like a gigabyte like, like and i guess you could call it a twist of irony but the fact that they have the access to every bit of information in the world in their on their phone when as opposed to when i was a kid in order for me to access the internet i had to dial up on the yeah. phone to access you know slowly yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> to the at, sound of dial-up. at like a thousand Time, like half, like you know, you know, it's a thousand times faster on a current cell phone than it is when I had to dial up. It's ridiculous, man. And if someone, and, I know, and, and, and uh, I like, I like the uh, when like I think it was Bernie Gus talking about like, uh, do I want to download this porn image? The description seems good. Yeah. <laughs> do I do I do I make that gamble? <laughs> okay, I'll do it. <laughs> No man, I'm not kidding. Image. That is very true. Like the first, the first game that I fell in love with on the PC online for me was EverQuest, and that was in 1999. And I did not have. I lived with a guy that did not want to get uh, broadband because at that time, monthly for broadband, you're going to find this shocking, was like $200 a month for wow. like a basic package of broadband. Christ. And it was probably like a tenth of what it is now, uh, the bandwidth. And uh, <laughs> so we would just use the phone. So. I, he, we ended up getting two lines to the apartment because I wanted to play EverQuest. I didn't care when people. Basically, back then we used to have a service where you could you didn't need a voicemail on your phone line. I mean, on your on your phone, you can actually have a voicemail service for like an extra five bucks a month. So my line ended up having voicemail. So I would log in, play EverQuest for a few hours, and on dial up, which meant I once you, when you zoned, it would take you ten minutes to load to the next zone. Christ. So like, and that's like leaving one little area to the next little camp and it was like 10 15 minutes to load uh i would get offline after about three or four hours and i'd have all these voicemails <laughs> like i'd have to check it's like hey where are you or your phone's busy where the hell are you it's like oh shit uh because even back then i mean i had a cell phone but back then it was like you only got so many minutes and you couldn't you it was like it was area code restricted yeah know, like free ridiculous. weekends free nights <laughs> oh man just oh, to tell you guys a funny that. story i dated a girl that uh, she had a phone that she got a deal where the first minute was free. <laughs> so, and I'm not kidding for the for two years, fifty nine second would, conversations. Her her dad would call or her mom would call. She would talk for a minute and then hang up and then they'd call back again and talk and hang up and call <laughs> back again <laughs> and hang up and talk. I, and that would go on for like thirty minutes. I'm not kidding you guys because she got the first minute for free. That's the uh, that's the yeah. most like clever, but not. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things like you look like That's a really dedication. big douchebag. Yeah. That's dedication to the person. craft. How <laughs> how expensive were minutes? They're pretty fucking. Cheap, was, yeah, it wasn't man. cheap. Yeah, I would get like I'm gonna say maybe like a hundred to two hundred minutes or three hundred minutes for like uh, my phone was like ninety bucks a month back then, and that was like at the late nineties, like ninety seven, ninety eight. And then after that, probably I'd say around 2001 is where you started hearing the the big packages, the 1,200 minutes for like 60 bucks a month, you know. And then they would allow nationwide long distance was removed after that, you know. And now it's uh, unlimited free access to like every single state in the United States. Everything except data. Well, man, just just you guys know, I had a contract with Sprint a long time ago before any of that. It was 99. And when I signed up, 
they had started implementing the free long distance at at that point. Well, but what happened but before that, I had a cell phone that had a Houston number and I lived in Austin. The reason why I had a Houston number is so my parents could dial me toll free. Makes sense, right? Because uh, yeah. they, it would make sense. Well, the problem is, is that the provider that I signed up with didn't base it off of the number being called. It based it off of the fucking tower. One month, I got a two thousand dollar phone bill. Fuck, Jesus. because it connected to like Mexico or some bullshit too. No, no, I was in Austin and they were in Houston. Even though she would dial, my mom could dial, you know, the two eight one number, and it would be toll free for her, so she wouldn't have to pay long distance charges. We thought it made sense that way, and I had like a shitload of minutes. I had well, back then five hundred minutes was like a shitload for us. But um, so it was, it was, okay, it makes sense. Well, then my mom calls me and says, "I got your phone bill." I said, "Okay." She goes, "It's eighteen hundred dollars." Uh, Did you actually have what? to pay that? And she goes, "Yeah, hold on." So she 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 uh she goes to her office, scans it, and emails it to me. And every single call to them was what Jack did. Not only her, them, but my girlfriend at the time was living thirty minutes away from me. In I lived in Austin. She lived in a little town called Seguin outside of Austin, thirty minutes away. But because that had a different, uh, it was on a different tower too. Boom. That was also long. That was also, they called it roaming charges, you know. Oh, yeah. They called it all, they, they just basically, they would all call it classified as roaming charges. So I had this huge bill of just roaming, 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 roaming. I was like, oh, my God. That reminds, yeah. me, um, that reminds me of the first time texting came out. And uh, you would hear those ridiculous stories of kids oh, that ran up, fuck. like, a $1,000 texting bill. Yeah. Oh yeah. My younger like sixty cents my younger attacked. Do you know why they were doing that? Because they would they would attach a bunch of people. They would mass text. Yeah. And then back then, you know, they, you could you're only allotted so many per per month. They would mass text each other, and they had no. They would they a lot of people thought when you send out one text, even if it's to a hundred people, it only counts as one text total. And it's no, it's for every per every number you attach to. I it remember when I had account t- text, and, where, um, and like I mean, they like changed the programs. They were like getting more and more like, not, like endless texting. It's just an assumed thing. Yeah, it's yeah. unlimited texting. Oh, that, man. Yeah, well, but, the reason why the texting thing was not a big deal is because it's so cheap for them. Yeah. The, the, the providers. And then all of a sudden we jump into like, you know, the actual data, which they were never ready for. They offered all that unlimited shit in the very beginning. And they were never ready for that. Their networks were never ready. Well, yeah, everyone so. using gigs and gigs of data. Well, yeah, but that was because they, when that, what started all that was the iPhone because there were plans that had data. Like my, I had a phone, a Nokia phone, that I had access to the Internet and email and stuff with no problems, and I wouldn't use any of the data hardly. But what killed it for everybody was that fucking iPhone because then the lowest common denominator of consumer started wow. gobbling up all the fucking data all the time. I mean, there were people that would just they would log into Pandora and just leave the fucking thing on all day long for no reason just yeah. because, my look, my phone's on the Internet all day long. It's great. It's like, well... <laughs> Somebody's got to have to eat up that fucking cost, yeah. man. So, Dude, yeah. that takes me back to like when I used to work for this company called Afni, and, and they're a, a outsourced company that does customer service for Verizon Wireless. And when like I had to fight tooth and nail not to give out credits for fucking data. It's like, this isn't your contract, but I, but I didn't know. I'm like, well, like I, I, I had to deal with the lowest common denominator, like, for five days a week, you know, nine to five, and it was just heart wrenching. And I, and I remember having to explain people like bills to people when they went out of town, and they didn't call in to see if there were any as- associated charges, and they had like ten grand in in debt because they they spent. Oh goodness! Yeah, cause yeah. They, they used two gigs of data overseas in France or you know in Japan or something. It's like oh, I'm uh, they're like oh my bill seems a little higher. Oh, it's. <laughs> It's five grand higher because you didn't call in and fucking ask. My bill seems like a house. Like someone <laughs> like Bernie was Bernie was screwed over in Australia oh, yeah. when they oh, tried yeah. to send oh, like extra yeah. texts back, back, back and forth. They were emailing us back and forth or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God. And then there's there's like countries like if you're if you live really close to Mexico or if you live really close to Canada, those the the providers on the opposite sides of the border will boost their signal so when your call travels through to another tower they get that roaming charge well, so they great. get that well basically so you're you're near Mich- Michigan right and you make a call okay well 
what a phone company can do from ca- Canada, like like their phone companies, they can boost a signal for their tower so that it so that your phone can pick up on that tower and then travel back to whoever you're calling. That causes roaming, and the roaming cost isn't a cost that Verizon pays, uh, you know, keeps in their pocket. It's it's they pay whoever they have a deal with for the tower. So basically, it's a huge fuck you to whoever lives on the borders, either north or south, because it's like, oh, free money from stupid Americans, and it's like, Jesus Christ, Lord help me. I have to explain this to the 60 or 70 year old lady who lives in Michigan about why it's like, you you, you can't make calls in that part of Michigan, or you should turn Wi-Fi on and use Skype, and then she's like, what's Skype? I'm like, well, f- great. <laughs> great. Yeah, it's great, and you should use it, so that way you stop seeing a a thousand dollar phone bill each month now now you now you can even like do like i could call from skype just sitting on my computer because it's like attached to some some of the numbers Mm -hmm. we've come a long way yes we have we yeah tech like both as a society and technology wise yeah just massively (laughs) down Data throttling Ugh. is the worst. It, it won't. Uh, well, which company? That's not going to change anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah, because there's so-called unlimited data plan. Oh, yeah, and that's like when I worked at Verizon Wireless. It's like, why don't you have unlimited? It's because we don't throttle our data. Like that was my huge selling point as an agent. It's just like they throttle their data. It's and then they say it in their fucking contracts. Like you just read yeah, them. It's actually, like we have yeah. the right to control your speed at which you use the internet at whatever rate you can get it. Yeah, which technically isn't violating anything. I mean, it's... yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's because they, they, everyone loves to take advantage of all the people that don't want to read through the fifty pages of. Well, if you consent to this, blah blah. blah well, look, blah, blah, I worked blah, blah. in collections in college. I can tell you this: yes. uh, when it comes to contracts, if somebody doesn't understand, not my fucking problem, and I don't fucking feel bad, you know. Yeah. So when somebody's that, when someone opens up a line of credit and they charge it, they're like, "Well, I didn't know I had to pay every month." Where what? the fuck did you think the bill? What did you think was going to happen? They were going to give you a card and you weren't going to have to pay for a year. That's not how it fucking works. Read the contract. I, well, I did, there's a lot of shit on there. Well, that's not anyone's responsibility but yours. Same thing with the cell phone thing. I I, I don't like it. Don't get me wrong. I think it sucks that my data gets throttled because it's not because of me because I don't use 18 gigs. I may use five or six gigs a month sometimes, but because there's idiots out there that they fucked it up for everyone else when in 06 or 07 when the first iPhone came out, when they just basically fucked us all because they, they, they basically jam packed their, their networks and these providers weren't ready for it. They didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, redo their their uh, their systems, and they didn't want to. They thought this was going to be easy for them. Uh, it's all stupid. It really is. But you know what? That's just that comes with the territory. If you're going to buy something, know what you're buying before you buy it. Most Don't certainly. complain. And and it's like I've seen, like I've read a contract. Like that was a part of our training. Like I I've signed up for an upgrade for Verizon Wireless, and it's all very clear. If you cancel your contract within the two years, there may be an ETF, and based on how early or at what time, it's, it, that's, it's when you, literally that's how much a money you pay. Well, it literally states everything in plain English. Exactly. It's not using some bull. It's not using some bullshit legal speak. It's all very common denominator, you know, low spectrum vocabulary. I don't. I don't know if it's low spectrum. I'm just like all, all like. It's a good medium vocabulary that it, they're using. Like there is going to be fees. Yeah, yeah. Like a couple things might need explaining. Like if you were like, well, specify what you exactly mean by this or that. But then there's like the, you know, people that don't pay attention to even the the warning like right posted on they the main page. Click on through. Yep. I want phone. I want phone now. Give me what? phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, yeah. There was this lady who bought. I, I, I'm pretty sure I told this story multiple times, but it just, I'm flabbergasted by it to this day. She bought a iPhone 5C for her six-year-old's daughter, and I was like, "Whoa, say what?" <laughs> I, like I laughed. I laughed at her, and she's like, "Yeah, it's kind of funny." And I'm like, "Oh shit, I shouldn't have done that. She's gonna fail my survey." <laughs> like. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> but I, I recovered because she ended up liking me because I, I, you know, I helped her out with whatever. But and then you were fired. Know, like, and, uh... 
no, I can't quit that job. And so now hard. he's here. Like, I, yeah, exactly. Yep. Amen. No, I gave um, him powers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but fucking, I don't know. Like, Fusion, have you ever had anyone laugh at your face and then say they're not going to pay their bill and hang up on you? Yeah. Yeah, that happened a lot. No. What happens? What like? <laughs> they, they, can't really. Uh, they just and then they fail your survey, and it's like I'm not paying this bill. I'm not paying this bill. It's a one thousand dollars and eight hundred. You know, it's one thousand eight hundred dollars. I'm not paying this bill. I'm like, miss, I'm you know. Yeah. Oh man, a, I uh, I oh, worked in Christ. collections, and I worked in two types. I worked in the short, quick collections for Citibank, and I've also worked in third party collections where these are bills that have been charged off more. and. A collection company buys them the debt from a, from a bank. Those are probably the worst. That's the mm. most stressful, worst mm. business you'll ever deal with because these people don't give a fuck. Yeah, they well, don't give a damn. The, the bank's only and you have to be an asshole. The bank's only selling the debt because they've been like, you know what, this they isn't happening. Damn, We're not even going to yeah. bother anymore. I mean, this. I mean, I used and I was good because I can be an asshole when I want to be, and I was good at this job. I mean, like they would they would just like watch me work. Guy calls in, as an example, guy calls in, you know, this guy called in one time, he had a bill that he owed, you know, that we bought from a company, like, let's just say as an example, MasterCard, and it was $6,000. He calls me, you know, he calls in, oh, yeah, I have a bill that I want to square away with you guys, okay? Well, I don't make much, uh, you know, let's just say the example, I pull up his account, the bill is $6,000. Yeah, I don't make much, but uh, I want to square this away to get my credit fixed, and you know, I can only offer you twelve hundred dollars. You know, I can get that over to you in a couple weeks. I mean, you know, to, you know, in a week. But I want to get this, uh, you know, a letter stating that it's been taken care of. It's been resolved. You know, that it's off my off my credit report. This is where the wheeling and dealing starts, folks. Um, these creditors, when they buy the debt, they it comes with the they have affidavits for each individual line of credit. So there's an affidavit that states that signed that states. You know, this X collection company now owns this debt, is the owner of this debt. So, so and so person has to pay the collection company. And at that point, the collection company can do whatever they want. They can, they can wheel and deal. So, a lot of people call in and they play stupid, like this guy. Okay, well, while I'm talking with him, I'm like, okay, hearing his little sob story, I'm, I'm on mute and I pull up his credit report. Well, fuck me, the guy's trying to buy a $300,000 house. Oh, shit, so what man. the problem is is that he's trying to get this cleared off his credit so he can get the get the house loan because he's being denied because uh-huh. of this outstanding charged off debt. You So, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I don't we can't do $1,000 on $6,000. I mean, what can you do? Well, then he breaks out with and this is a true story by the way, guys. Well, you know what, buddy? I used to work in collections, so I know how this is going to work, and I'm going to tell you how it's going to work. I have $1,200. I'm going to get this over to you by the end of the week, and you're going to send me an, uh, send me a release, uh, a letter of release. Letter of release is basically by the company that owns the debt. It's, it's a legal document that go. states they've been re- absolved of the debt. You know, they don't no longer own it. Well, he says all this and says, and you're going to do this for me, and you're going to take it, and you're going to like it. And I just basically just started laughing. I put him on mute, and I started laughing. I put myself on mute, got back on the phone, and everyone's like, can hear what's going on. It's like, all right, you know what? Since you told me uh, what you think's going to happen, I'm going to tell you what's really going to happen. You owe us six thousand uh, dollars. If you really want to buy that house, um, you're going to cut me a check for five thousand dollars, and you're going to have it. And you're going to pay for this. You're going to overnight it uh, next morning. Uh, to my office, and it's going to be on my desk by 11 a.m. If not, I'm going to turn this over to my my legal department, and we're going to file a lawsuit against you because you live in a. And by the way, you live in a garnishment state, which means if this does go to court, and when this does go to court, you you're going to be charged with a civil yep. civil judgment, and we can garnish your wages. Yep. So you're going to send me this check for five thousand dollars, and you're going to have it to me, like I said, by 11 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, and I, I'm like, okay. And I hung up on the guy and everyone's like, what the fuck? You know, my bosses were like, uh, I'm like, he'll have a check here. And I was off the next day. So two days later, I come back on my desk. There's a check for $5,000. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, love, I mean, I love that. I love that. So, calls. you know, I, those kind of calls you can be an asshole with. I mean, we, I've gotten into arguments with people. Um, I've been laughed at. I've been cussed out. I had a, a, a older black lady tell me that Jesus was going to pay her bill. And I asked her if Jesus. <laughs> well, hold on. And I asked her if Jesus was the one that spent ten thousand dollars on this Chase Mastercard and then not paid it. 
And her reply was, Jesus is going to take, I'm going to keep praying and God's going to pay my bill. I'm like, that's not how God, that's not how it works. That's yeah. not how it works. Well, uh, so see, yeah, you get, you get people that just, just really want to pull your hair out. You're Most lucky, times. man, because I'm collections, real. they can be assholes. They don't get surveys. Like customer service? <laughs> no, no. Fuck, Customers dude. in general can well, be Well, that's assholes. internal quality <laughs> control. That's the problem. If you work at a place like a giant place like that, the, in, the internal Q, uh, Q, uh, C is just ridiculous. Yeah, yes. Like, I've, and I've worked at a place temporarily like that. I worked for a call center in Austin. I'm going to blow uh, my I was head off, in, man. While I was working in radio, I took a job working for General Motors uh, as a customer service person. Everyone I worked with were idiots. I was good at the job. The only problem was that if you don't follow the script to the T, they will dock you. And I had this call where this person, I answered all the questions, pulled up everything on the computer, and it was, and I conversed with the person. They loved it, whatever, hung up. My supervisor goes, okay, we had to fail you for that call. Everything was great, but you forgot to ask him this one question. Like, were you, satis- are, were you satisfied oh, with this fuck call? fuck, yeah. I hated that I'm bullshit. I'm like, really? It's, it's like th- but, that yeah. call will come back, and it'll be a, a past survey, and then... I'll still get pulled back to, by my superior or what have you, and it's like, oh, did you? You could have used resolve more here, or you could have said thank you more here. I'm like, ah, well, fuck you, because you know what? That lady was happy. I solved her problem, and she's gonna have a great day. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be more away. friendly. Like, if well, you, you have, have to be, you have to be organic. Script, that's, that's the thing. Is that, about it. If you're organic, it makes the call better because you sound natural, and it makes them comfortable because you're comfortable. When you're reading a script. It, you it, nine times out of ten, the person doing the whole script spiel is going to get uh, an annoyed person, especially when they can't answer their questions or solve the problem right away. And the person keeps saying, uh, "Okay, well, please, can you hold for five minutes while I work on this? Can you hold for five minutes while I work on this?" And if they keep reading the script, it's going to piss off that person because I know because I'm that person. Yeah, so, yeah. like I, me, I would get in trouble because I would deviate from the script and I would be natural. I'm like, "All right, Steve, let's see. Let me look and see what I can do for you. Hold on." You know, just oh well, you didn't say you didn't ask him if you could be if he could be put on hold. I'm like, well, like the guy has no fucking choice, man. You know, yeah, <laughs> if he wants an answer, he's gonna say yes. Yeah, I don't know, like, but I love that job because there were a lot of people. I hated it and I loved it because there were a lot of people. Well, there's, with, there's always good moments yeah. where uh, there you can have a great experience with the certain customers that you're having. Yeah, and the, like that 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 one person, you're like, oh, I'm glad they called because that was actually a fun time that I just had right yeah, there. Yeah, you know, I had a five minute call with some dude. We talked about League of Legends, and then he fixed my phone for me. Like, you know, yeah. that that's what I love to do. But at the same time, there were certain things like it wasn't a script for Verizon Wireless. I don't think too many p- companies use scripts. There are key phrases and words that they use, but there there's no longer a script because not every situation has a script for it. I guess is what they found out eventually. Yeah. I have, but, uh, I have two guys from Microsoft on my Xbox Live friends list right now. That's nice. <laughs> that's <pretty cool. laughs> Good for you. I actually um at my work, well the place I worked before, they actually on the receipt there were review things. Pretty much the customer would do a review of the service and they get a coupon for a free donut. And my boss constantly said, "Oh, suggest the review more. Suggest the review more." I'm like, I'm not going to ask these people because. Pretty much all the customers I had were regulars. There weren't really like, customers that came in once I never saw again. So I wouldn't want to force them on these people because it's like I actually like talking to this person while I'm working, so I'm not going to force them to do a survey for me. <laughs> it just felt like the dumbest thing to ask someone. It's like, okay, I gave you good service. Now can you please do the survey so that my work's you know rating for customer satisfaction or whatever goes up it's like it just feels like yeah. the worst well, that, thing and somebody for my well quickly the surveys at my work in, unless they rate you a 5 it's as it's failing oh yeah it yeah would, it's so, so dumb it's that they have basically. to do that yeah. and like everyone ignores it we have to point I heard it out the pain to everyone in chaos's voice he was like oh, uh. <laughs> oh and i love i love their way of um encouraging us to put these out is at the end of the year pretty much every month a certificate was given to someone who whoever, whoever had the highest rating by customers if you had the most certificates by the end of the year you got a 50 dollar gift card uh, it's like i'm gonna work a whole year for 50 dollars <laughs> just a 50 dollar visa gift card so it's fifty dollars. Like, you just got free just fifty dollars, but that's after a year, and that's only if you got the most certificates out of a the whole year. year. 
Yeah. Tell you no figure fifty dollars. Nah, it's yeah, not worth that. it. Man. Yeah. It's like, that does not encourage me in any. Now I have such worked way. at call centers where they do shit like, okay, the next person that gets a five hundred dollar uh, check by phone will get a fifty dollar gift card or fifty dollars cash. Those were fun times. Those were very fun times. Yeah. But when you work at like the third party collections places, they're fucking depressing. They they hound you, man. I mean, on top of that, I'm gonna go ahead and disclose this, but I worked for, I worked at a place in Austin. This guy, like the like one of the managers, apparently had like a dozen sexual harassment suits on him nice. within like five years. Nice. And the guy would hire was notorious for hiring local strippers to come work at the call center, and he. And he would hit on them all like the time. Like you guys said, nice. Oh, he has sexual harassment no. charges? Oh, nice. I'm being fucking sarcastic. <laughs> nice. I mean, like, this guy I'm was, like, facetious. in charge. <laughs> this guy was in charge, and he just basically would hire strippers what all the time for this call center. Scum lord. I mean, it was great for us because it was always a very interesting work environment for us. But, you know, just as a management standpoint, it was awful. I mean, bad. I mean, I have some bad stories about that place because, I mean... Half the time I was drunk. Half the time I was drunk. The other half oh, I was. Uh, yeah, do you, I worked with. The, I worked with the, a guy that sold X. You, you, <laughs> on there's, the side. there's so many people in call centers that are so fucking sketchy. Like they smoke weed in the bathrooms. They come. They with, smoke like, weed on the call. <laughs> yeah, they they fucking they have a flask in their jacket. <laughs> like some people, they would bring 44 ounces of uh, like pineapple. Uh, Soda and then fill like the other half of the forty four ounce with vo- like coconut vodka and make pina colada flavored out al- mi- mixed drinks. We, like- work, we worked with this guy, this Puerto Rican guy, and he was fucking hilarious. Well, like I said, one of the guys I worked with was an ex dealer, and Christ, he brought man. some to work. And we actually talked to this Puerto Rican guy into into, into rolling at the, on the job. Oh, so God, he rolled. No. We, we, we got off at nine that? o'clock. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Coworkers, we, we got off at nine better? o'clock. We got it off at 9 o'clock, and uh, we had him roll at 6, and we were fucking with him. Um, I went to the vending machine and bought one of those. You remember the little the little metal cans of orange juice they used to have? Mm-hmm. I, I bought one and put it on his desk. He's like, oh, man. And I would walk by and go, and he was rolling like fuck balls. He was just out of it. And he was just sitting there. He's like, I don't know, guys. I'm fucked up. <laughs> we walked by <laughs> oh man and the guy was so bad and there was one time where like I said this the, the, our boss would hire a lot, a lot of strippers and uh, you know the the benefit for us was we got to be friends with these strippers and hang out with them well one of them uh, managed out, to wait, wait. get us oh, yeah managed to get us um VIP full time at one of at the club she worked at on the side. That's fucking so we cool. would go during lunch, and I'm going to tell you guys a little secret. And you, <laughs> most of you probably most and listeners don't know this, but if you ever want a good lunch, strip clubs have pretty damn good lunches. I'm going to tell you that now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I've been to many. Didn't even eat the lunch at that place, place. especially the <laughs> so. The, the, no, the gay not, ones have good drinks. He's not. Yeah. Get your he's shit not straight. talking about eating puss, ladies and gentlemen. That is not what strip clubs are for. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's for burgers and fries. Yes, but anyway, so, um, um, I got s- one time I got so drunk at lunch, we went back to work, right now, and we were sitting there. We were sitting there, and we didn't get any work done, and we were getting in trouble for not making any calls at the call center. And the guy just looked at me. He goes, "I want to get the fuck out of here." I'm like, "I do too. I'm ready to go home. Me too." Half an hour later. Want to go back to the strip bar? Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so we just got up in the middle of our shift and went back, oh, and no one even so knew. I have to say, the ones that have like a breakfast bar, I'm like, why do you have a? Breakfast oh, that means you're bar? there for the long haul. Oh bro. yeah, for sure. That's, you're there for the long haul. That's some desperate times. Yeah. Desperate times, desperate measures. Yeah. But know. yes, call centers are a very interesting place. They, yeah, it's a very interesting culture. Very diverse when I it comes imagine. to people. Like because, yeah, like. You'll meet somebody who was a crackhead for five years and then reformed and, and saw Jesus, or you'll meet some like straight up pothead <laughs> dude, and or you'll even meet like a, a like he used to be a hedge fund like dude way back in the day, and then he lost his job, and like you'll meet all these different people from different walks of life, and it's interesting. But some of them are just re- like a lot of the time they're fucking crazy. Like I was when I used to smoke e-cigarettes um, back when I was trying to quit smoking, and I'm no longer smoking. 
Uh, some lady said that my vapor smelt like meth, and I'm like, okay then. Thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and not. Why do you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you like... know what meth smells. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, okay but then. Can Why I didn't have know some? That, but <laughs> thanks. And then I just never talked. <laughs> no, yeah, I never talked. What but do you have? Some? Yeah. Basically. Did you bring <laughs> enough for the class? Yeah. <laughs> hey, like for some me. reason at your workplace, no one could call you at 420. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, um, I used to be part of a youth police group, so I actually know what certain drugs smell like because we actually had a day where they taught us about drugs. So, guys. Wait, so did they, like, light up drugs and have you sniff each one? Yeah. <laughs> like. Well, not exactly. This is angel it, it, dust. It came along the line when we were learning about So, the one you could And pretty much they, the one you could sniff was the cocaine, right? They're like, this is cocaine, but don't yeah. smell it. <laughs> Stay away from this. There was actually a pack of cocaine they had, though. Uh, so, guys, night calls are dark. Yeah, he's a straight up narc. We can't trust him, man. Night sauce. Oh, well, actually, yes, I did. I, <laughs> I used to do um, I used to do a liquor store where I would go in, try and buy a case of beer, and see if they would card me. Wow. Really? Yeah. You're an asshole, <laughs> man. That's awesome. So you're a narc. <laughs> <laughs> Let me guess. You bought the beer and just went home with it, huh? So you yeah, were exactly. you were literally the fun police? Uh, yeah, basically. Much. Damn. I would go in. They'd say, "Okay, try try to buy a case of beer." And if they try to card you, say okay and walk away. But if they didn't, pay for it and come back out to us. And then a week later, they would receive a notice saying they're being fined for selling alcohol to oh, an so underage minor. Oh, so you get to keep the, and... the beer? Yeah. No, I didn't oh, get to keep okay. the beer. Well, <laughs> the cops kept the beer. The cops kept the beer. <laughs> the cops kept the beer. The cops were like <laughs> drinking it as we they're need walking you, away. We need you to. We need you to yeah, trick them into selling your beer, and, up. and we'll pay you in beer. <laughs> He's just like walking by the cop car, opening up a beer. You want this can away. here? Yeah. Have it. It's on the house. <laughs> it's on the house. Here's your payment. Uh, and then they had um a same program for younger members, which was for uh, cigarettes. Mm. I didn't participate in that one because by the time I had joined this program, I was you seventeen, and um. I had almost, I was like a month away from turning 18, so they just put me into so the So you're doing all this goody-good stuff. Did you get beat up a lot? <laughs> no. Okay. In fact, people didn't mess with me because they taught me self-defense. He was, so basically Kick you're him like in the nuts a, and run. He was friends with yeah, all the yeah. cops. Pretty much I've had police he's, training. He's the rogue been cop been without, without <laughs> a... So- Police training. Did no they problem. tase you? Did they did, did they tase you? I actually, I actually had, did demonstrate being tased. Did you piss yourself? Hey guys, so spread. I've learned oh. that we had I we got a new fan that has only laughed a couple times, which I don't know if that's a compliment or an insult. <laughs> Who's this fan? This person talking to you on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> My status. Good. Is she listening? <laughs> yeah, she said she laughed she... a couple times. You know, over well, the past sorry, just hey, a couple. To be fair, <laughs> we, we don't advertise Whatever. ourselves as a comedy <laughs> podcast specifically. We're also an informative and just general I podcast mean... as well. Yes, yeah. Cassie, we cover a broad spectrum of topics. Yeah, so from sometimes they're funny, from cursing, sometimes wasted, they're serious. From cursing beheading ninja turtles. Sometimes, to sometimes we burp, sometimes we fart, and, and if you're Zach, you poop while you eat a bowl of and cereal. And they get poop particles. I mean, <laughs> the I, I te- I'm telling you, and don't think about it. The Just nasty thing is he eats Cocoa Pebbles crunch. while he takes and a Apparently someone gets elected president crunch. when they're not here. Yeah. <laughs> Someone want to explain this to me? You know why you were nominated as the president, right? No. You're the figurehead. What? I think that's what he was man. asking. You're the, you, because it's such an important <laughs> position, no bot. So you yeah, you'll have to, to listen back to that podcast. <laughs> which which podcast was it? 96 or 92? 95? No, no, 95, 95 was Monty. the last one. Right, so this is 90. No, was it? It, it was, was last one. No, 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 it was 97. So, in a couple 97. podcasts. When yeah, last week. You know what? So this is I need a beer. It's gonna be le- really. It, 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 basically, we're gonna cut. We're gonna once 100 <laughs> comes out, we're gonna uh, fuck with it'll everybody. It'll be recorded when we get to and then released like very. We're soon not even afterwards. gonna do 100. We're gonna skip. Can it be released? We're just on gonna my fuck birthday, with people. So it, it, we can't. We can't <laughs> literally <laughs> release it on the birthday because that's when it's being recorded. <laughs> because because we finish it two hours <laughs> yeah. on the and on the date, so that would actually be a big problem. Yes. You know. As, yeah. as, on a serious note, we're, well, no, this actually, is the plan. No. We're going to release, we're going to do podcast number 99, and then the next week we're going to do podcast number 101, just to fuck with people. Yeah. We're going to skip we 100. We can't do that. 
No, then 100 will be replaced with a Doctor Who episode, <laughs> and it'll all work together. I don't watch <laughs> Doctor Who, so we can't do that either. You guys are mean. <laughs> <laughs> going home. We're actually going to show a Terrence and Phillips not without my anus episode. All right, yep, that. that's what we're going <laughs> to. We we're going to skip we can do that. Just... It seems like we're at the hour mark, folks. Yeah, so, we're getting close to. So I'm on the podcast. That means we stay an extra twenty minutes. Haven't you learned? No, because um, it... so you can find us at the forum thread via Twitter. You can find us if you are interested in gaming at TFT Plays on Twitter. When it comes to YouTube, you can f- look for the podcast for TFT Productions and YouTube for gaming stuff for TFT Plays. And then we also do both TFT Plays and uh, TFT Productions post on our Facebook. Just look for the form thread. We also have a SoundCloud. Um, uh, no, but are you going to be performing anywhere this weekend? No. Atlantic City, no. Vegas? No. Sadly, no. no. Well, Descend, do you want to pimp your podcast? Or to, you, to, 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 um, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Happy Campcast, but you mentioned that already, so. Yeah, okay. Check that out. It's on the, it's on the uh, RT <laughs> site, and they also have their own uh, site called DescendingGamer.com. I'm just, just going to link to uh, a picture of a ha- happy campers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, good night, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.